In this video, I'll show you some of the updates I've done to the media controllers from the previous video. I'll also try to answer some of the common questions I got. When we're done, it should be possible to select some music or playlists, have icons that work and adjust volume of multiple speakers. If you haven't watched the other video, you should probably do that first. I've also updated the code on the Gumroad link. In this video, I use Layout Card and Spook from Hacks. The buttons I use to start Spotify playlists is similar to another video I've created. The link should be on the screen, so if you want more details about this technique, I recommend you watch that first. The idea is to have a bunch of buttons that each trigger a random playlist within a certain genre. You could of course trigger whatever you want, so if you want to play a certain artist, album, podcast, or radio station, you could just do that instead. As usual I want to take up as little space as possible, because we mainly use our phones, so I have a row of buttons that's scrollable left and right. I use paper buttons row for this. You can see the overall styling I use on the screen. I'm gonna add one more button to this. My girlfriend requested a button to start Christmas music. So let's add a new button. My name will just be Jewel for Christmas. Then with tap action, I'm gonna trigger a script that I'll create later. Then let's do some very basic styling. The button itself will be 76 pixels high and wide and I need to add flex shrink zero so that the flex layout doesn't shrink the button. I use my standard background color, but you can add whatever you want here. Then I set border radius to be 24 pixels. Then I set the text color to be a white color. I realize that I've added some unnecessary code to all the other buttons, so I just remove that. Now let's create the script so that the button can actually do something. If you want to trigger a random playlist, you need to set up a drop down helper first. If you just want to trigger one playlist, you can skip this step. Go into Devices and Services, Helpers, and create a new drop-down helper. Give it a name that makes sense. Now we need to go into Spotify and search for Christmas playlists. Then when you found a suitable one, copy the link to the playlist. Paste it somewhere and grab only the last section of the URL, and paste it into the drop-down helper. Do this a few more times so you have a few different ones to randomize. Now go to Settings, Automations and Scenes scripts and create a new empty script. To select a random item from the dropdown, I use a hacks integration called Spook. If you don't have this installed, you should because it is awesome. Add the Input Select Random option to the script and select the dropdown under Choose Entity. Then add the Media Player Play Media action. Select your speaker as the entity. In the Content ID field, we need to add a quite specific string to make it work. Start by adding Spotify, colon, user, colon, Spotify, colon, playlist, colon. Then we add the state of our drop-down helper using a short Jinja code. As soon as you start typing squiggly brackets, the UI will change over to YAML view, and you can complete the Jinja code. Below we need to add media content type, playlist. And that's the finished script. Save it as something useful. Test it if you want and add it to the tap action of the dashboard button. Something I forgot in the previous video, and a few of you mentioned it as well. The media control buttons doesn't actually change depending on the repeat, shuffle, and play pause states. So let's fix that now. The template for this is pretty simple. We use a basic if-else Jinja code. If the repeat attribute of the speaker is currently off, we show one icon, else we show another. Then we can just copy this code and paste it onto the last button. Here we need to change the attribute to shuffle and edit the icons. We also need to change off to false. The play button is similar, but for this we don't need to look at an attribute, we can look at the state of the speaker. So if the speaker is currently playing, we show the pause icon. If it isn't playing, we show the play icon. Depending on your speaker, you might have to edit the play pause script slightly to start some media if no media is sort of loaded into the speaker. Next idea I had, you might have seen it already, is to have multiple speakers. Then I could adjust the volume of the speakers independently. I know there are ways to join and unjoin speaker groups. That will be the next step. But I haven't really figured out the script and automations for it yet. For now I just adjust the volumes when I move around the house. I also wanted to add some more information on either side of the volume slider. So I start by adding a new layout card to the vertical stack. I will create a three column grid layout where the first and third column is 70 pixels wide. I set the row height to be 30 pixels and I create the grid areas and just name them one, two, and three. I then add a custom button card. This will only display the name of the first speaker, so it's pretty simple. 
It's important to add what grid cell you want this card to appear in, so I add it to the cell called 1. Then I add a name, I just call it Ape for upstairs. Just to be sure, let's hide the icon and then we can add some basic styling. I add overflow visible to the card, just in case the border rounding crops off some of the content. The rest is just basic font styling and padding. I also hide the background. Now I just want to copy the slider into the layout card. So let's copy the code, delete the original slider card, and create a new card inside the layout card so we can paste the code there instead. And remember to add what grid cell this belongs to. To position the slider in the middle, I had to add a 10 pixel top margin to the slider container. Now I want to copy the first card and paste it into a new card in the third grid cell. Instead of a static text element, I want to display the volume in percent. So let's add some basic Java to do that. First add the speaker as an entity, then in add three square brackets to the name field. After return, we can add entity.attributes.volumeLevel. The attribute name depends on your speaker, of course. My speaker gives the volume between a value of 0 and 1, so I just multiply with 100. Then I floor the number. Just in case it decides to show a bunch of decimal numbers, then this will remove them. Now we can take this whole layout card and paste it as a new card in the stack. For this I just edit the text and entities, so it shows a volume slider for my downstairs speaker as well. Now all of a sudden we have a small problem with the icons again. To fix it, I add a OR function to the Jinja code for the repeat, shuffle, and play buttons. I also have another problem with the scripts. They only control and play from one speaker. To fix it, we have to go into each script and add the second speaker everywhere. We also have to remember to do this to the randomized playlist scripts that we created in the beginning of the video. Like I said earlier, I'm working on a clever script and automation that will let you join and unjoin speakers by toggling input booleans on the dashboard. With this, it would for example be possible to automate what speakers are playing based on motion sensors, so you can have music following you around the house. An early version of this script and automation is on the Discord server, so join if you're keen to try early or help out. That's it for this video, hopefully it answered some of the questions you had. Music Assistant is a great alternative as well, but for me it's too big. In our household, we just want to start some music, and it's nice to have the option for various genres. If I want more specific music, I prefer to use the Spotify app directly. Let me know if you have any further questions. Thanks for watching.